in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed hallelujah I was once told the story of a young lady, true story. I don't know, I think it happened, I hope I get the whole story. It happened because of jealousy and envy, I think. Maybe some woman, I was told, stamped her feet and beat her chest in the front of the lady and said, provided she's alive, that girl will not go forward. It will only work if you have not met power. Did you hear what I said? I believe in power. Oh. I really believe in power. We are wasting the time of God's people without power. That coalition from anywhere, while they make those enchantments while you are sleeping, this family should not rise. This family should not rise from nowhere, like thunder from heaven. Tabarus Kadiata. A power greater than all powers descends from the realm of the spirit with a manifestation in the physical realm and will scatter every plotting of darkness. Yeah. Hallelujah. It doesn't tire me to share our story when Koinonia started. I don't know who innocently decided to kill himself like that, that they brought charm and hung it outside. When they called my attention to it, I, in my mind, I said, who is this one now? Huh? You choose your battles with wisdom. Who wants to, you want to kill yourself for nothing? Abba. Even in, there's something called boxing. There's heavy weight. There's a, what's the other one? Middle weight. There's light weight. It's unfair to join some people together. The person who is a lightweight champion, he's only a champion based on those he's fighting. There are people when he joins the way they will punch him once. He will not only fall, he will die. May you be a heavyweight in the spirit. I say, may you be a heavyweight in the spirit. Believers, please hear me. Do not let anything and any teaching, I say this with every sense of love, but with every sense of passion. Do not let anybody make you downplay the relevance of spiritual warfare. If you believe that thing, you have destroyed your destiny. Now with all you, I love the body of Christ, but I owe you to teach you. Huh? Yes. There is a warfare dimension to living. Some of you, this is where you are now in your destiny actualization. The attacks in your life don't have a reason. And if you keep quiet, say, who did I offend? Have you said that thing before? Hello? Let me answer that question. You don't have to offend anybody. Just be born. Who did Moses offend? Who did Jesus offend? Provided they were born. The moment there is a prophetic word over you, whether you invite the devil or not, he will say, I, we have heard that there is a man of God rising from this family. Where is he? We've heard that there is somebody who is going to carry the grace to take this family out of shame. Satan does not look for everybody. 
everybody will be his victim but pending on the urgency there are people he knows if i attack this man it's equivalent to attacking everybody in that family so don't say who did i offend he will come knocking at your door hello sir i hear you are the firstborn in this family i've come to destroy all the ladies who destroy the man don't don't shut the door in fear open the door and tell him all right you will know that there are witnesses on earth you carry the breastplate of righteousness the helmet of salvation who art thou mountain before Zerubbabel before this family listen how do you know that you are under attack when the occurrences in your life do not match up are we together with the commitments of value and obedience you are bringing mysterious things happening in your life in two months everything in your life disappeared you lost your job your wife lost her job your child who does well in school very brilliant child he's returned with a result that is an evil report and you are watching no sir wake that child up and say this night we are going to do vigil in this house you carry your lantern carry your bible share one scripture if you don't know any scripture look for our teachings get one scripture from there lead your family to prayer tell them pray after me father they repeat in the name of jesus as a family we declare no enchantment and no divination carry your cac document from your business place it on the parlor there carry your child's uh, whatever it is place it as a point of contact in the name of jesus my child will not fail he will not waste my money are we together now three days in a row you had a dream and you saw your wife dying call her i'm not just your husband i'm the priest of this house let me lay my hands on you listen don't think i'm just acting do it this is the responsibility of leadership while the people are sleeping in your house wake up and start walking to your parlor to your bedroom your little son wakes up and you say don't worry boy go and sleep but if you want to learn follow me because one day you will learn too lay hands on everything in your house you had a dream that your car crashed in the name of jesus what god gives is for good every good and every perfect gift god will not give me what to kill me in the name that is above all are you hearing what i'm saying now you are about to have a meeting with people and you know they are not born again what makes you believe they will not tie charms or come with all kinds of things you are a christian but they are not christians and someone comes to sit down spend the whole night enchanting your name send forces to your office before their arrival by the time those forces are coming they will see light and angels they said the same way you were praying he was praying too <laughs> hallelujah ah come to koinonia destroy apostle and destroy koinonia it's a joke before you rise come on now before you rise here comes that fire the same fire we were furnished out of the same fire that protected shadrach meshach and abednego huh is the same fire that can kill and destroy true this world is not a gentle place of consensus i know I'm, I'm just a kind person if that is your philosophy safe journey some of us have seen the cruelty of men and spirits enough you don't fight out of anger and in foolishness but the truth is that the whole world is said have respect for the covenant oh lord for the dark places of the earth are the habitations of cruelty respect your covenant the dark places of the earth the devil will kill you if he can did you hear what i said he would destroy anything he can destroy you give him access to your life your children he will tear you he will use men he will use systems he will even use believers you need to learn to be strong i want you to take a minute 
just take one minute and pray and declare no weapon fashioned against me will prosper please open your mouth and pray no weapon fashioned against me will prosper every tongue that rises against me will fall in judgment someone is praying pray over your business pray over your ministry pray over your influence pray over the purposes of god in the life of your children someone is praying speak over your finances no decline in the name of jesus from glory to glory speak over your job all the antagonisms around your office surely they will gather but by favor your god will scatter them in the name of jesus in the name of jesus can i give you number five please sit down for a few minutes so engage in warfare be a believer that prays not out of fear the warfare of a believer is not fighting to win it's establishing the victory through prayer and the forces that have been made available for the believer establishing the victory that is in christ against unclean spirits who manipulate systems and manipulate men this is a twofold zone of operation of spirits they manipulate systems and structures to work against the saints and they manipulate the hearts of men number five manifesting spiritual realities mm. number one contend for light Number two, press into the realm of consciousness and conviction through meditation. Number three, mix the truth that you know with faith. Faith meaning obedience in all its ramifications. Obedience that commits the word. Number four, you engage in spiritual warfare, having the consciousness that there are demonical forces determined and assigned by hell to thwart the purposes of God in your life. Pay attention to number five. This is a very important component. Expect and prepare for the ministry of men. Expect and prepare for the ministry of men. Just write it down and I'll explain. How realities are manifest from the realm of the spirit to this physical realm. You must expect and you must prepare to receive the ministry of men. Hmm. Till the nations see Jesus. Till the nations see Jesus. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up exalted till the nations see Jesus lifted up glorified I receive I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified.
Write this down, please. The final manifestation of supernatural realities happens through the ministry of men. The final arrival or manifestation of spiritual realities happen through the ministry of men. I'm showing you the conversion systems in the spirit, how it leaves the realm of the spirit and finally arrives at your life. The final arrival or manifestation of supernatural realities, it happens through the ministry of men. John 5, 7. Why are you in this condition, Jesus said. And he said, I have no man that when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. 1 Samuel chapter 10, 3 and 4. Prophet Samuel blesses Saul and says, Then thou shalt go forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor, and there thou shalt meet three men. Who will you meet? As proof that prophecy has come upon your life, you will meet men, three men, going up to God to Bethel, one carrying three goats or kids, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine, verse 4. As a result, the men will salute you and give thee two loaves of bread, and when they give you, see it as God answering you, thou shalt receive it from where? How do you receive what God gives you? From the hands of men. How do you receive what God gives you? From the hands of men. One more time. How do you receive what God gives you? From the hands of men. Keep that scripture there. I'll read it one more time. They will salute you because God has gone ahead of you. They will give you two loaves. I prophesied increase, I prophesied restoration, I prophesied favor. This is what he's saying. But as proof, you will not get it from me. I'm representing God, but go. As you go, keep watching out for men. Watch out for men. Every time you see men, remember what God told you. He said, because of what God told you, men will give you, receive it from their hands. Where is your job? The hands of men. Your promotion, the hands of men. That is the truth. Every one naira, one dollar that will come into your account today is not falling from heaven. It's currently in the hand of a man. My life changed when I found out that every man's destiny is as taunted and delayed as the arrival of the men sent from God to you. When God wants to help you, he accelerates the arrival of the men who have a role to play in your life. If Jesus never found um, John the Baptist, he would have remained there. For a long time, I thought that John the Baptist, the pregnancy of John the Baptist was just a delay on Rebecca until God showed me from the lens of scripture. If John was born way ahead of Jesus, he would have been discouraged and he would have left that wilderness. He had to only be six months older than Jesus so that he would match the arrival of Jesus. If that guy was born before that time, he would have waited in the wilderness maybe for 10 years and he would have said, you know what? This Jesus is not coming to. It is from that scripture I learned that all things work together. There are some things that God makes to happen at certain times so that it will coincide with prophecy and make for your lifting. You believe that? Shout Amen. amen. John chapter... 6 from verse 5 the ministry of men 6 from verse 5 give it to us media Jesus lifted up his eyes this is Jesus after one of his crusades he saw a great company come to him and he said to Philip where are we going to buy bread in fact give me NIV please NIV let's let's work with NIV so you understand what the scripture is saying where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? Reading verse 6. He asks this only to test them for he already knew how to convert those spiritual realities. You see that now? Jesus himself, he knew that those resources were available. But how we to now come and feed 5,000 people? 7. 
Philip answered, eight months wages will not buy enough bread to give each one a bite. 5,000 men aside women and children. Verse 8. Another of his disciples called Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Uh -huh. Here is a young boy. Say men. The miracle always happens when men show up. So that when you are praying, you will know how God answers prayer. He answers prayer by sending men. But you must know how to receive the men. Because there are some of you, like the believers that were praying for Peter, they were praying for Peter to arrive. When Peter arrived and he opened the door, they shut the door back and said he was his angel. You need to know how to receive the men God is sending to you. Here is a boy. Even though he's a boy, he's still a man. Some of you will reject him immediately and say he's just a boy. How about the slave girl who brought about the miracle of Naaman? When it has to do with the ministry of men, I'll be showing you a few things. You must sustain the discernment to look beyond the limitations of men. Sometimes the person that God will use to lift you will not be a CEO somewhere. It will be the cleaner in your house. He will say something. There is a miracle service somewhere. Oh, sir, can I ask for permission to miss Sunday? A miracle service where? A ministry called Koinonia said, ah, people have been telling me about that thing. Oh, that can be the spirit of God moving. And you come and sit down outside, fire falls from heaven. And captivity of 100 years, 80 years, 30 years, just like that. And the moment you get healed and you get delivered, the boy says, I just got admission to move to a school somewhere. God brought that boy there as a destiny helper for your deliverance. Are we together? Back to that scripture, please. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two fish, but how far will they go among so many? Don't downplay what God can do with men. Jesus said, have the people sit down. You see where we got the formula for sharing our palliatives? From this scripture. I was discussing with the people when we were having a meeting and I said, let's go to scripture. How did they share bread in the Bible? The first thing is to tell the people to sit down. Because when people stand, they don't listen. So tell them to sit down. If you are not going to sit down, the bread will not come to you. This is where we found it. And there was plenty of grass in that place. And the men sat down, about 5,000 of them. Verse 11, Jesus took the loaves from the man. Watch this. He gave thanks. The supernatural aspect was done by Jesus. But then he now distributed it using men again. It was Jesus that gave thanks. But those who shared it were not angels. They were men. And as they were going sharing it, it was multiplying supernaturally. When you read down to verse 13, the Bible says everyone ate and he said, gather the crumbs. And they gathered, it was 12 baskets full and he said, let nothing be wasted. Men can be used by God to take away waste from your life. It is men that are responsible for increase, but it is also men that are responsible for managing the increase so that there is no waste. When it had to do with getting the blessing, men came. Distributing the blessing, men were there. Managing the excesses of people when abundance comes is still men. The final arrival of spiritual realities is through the ministry of men watch this now there are many dimensions of results and promises we seek I listed a few here growth financial increase direction healing deliverance get the teachings jobs promotions marital settlement fruitfulness receiving the anointing Business expansion, I'll repeat it again for your sake. Growth, financial increase, direction in life and destiny, healing, deliverance, jobs, promotions, marital settlements, fruitfulness of all sorts, receiving the anointing, expansion in business, intellectual growth all of these resources are men dependent 
There are realities that are finished in the realm of the spirit, but they all depend on the ministry of men. I took out time to study from Genesis to Revelation, the various manifestations of the supernatural to find out how many of them did not depend on men. And there were very few, very few in the Bible. For instance, the original creation, a man did not play a role because a man was not even there. You see that now. Jesus or God visiting Solomon, there was no man there directly as we know. So there are a few miracles that were directly, it was God to men, but men did not meet wife it. But most manifestations depended on men. Let me list a few for you. The multiplication of men across the earth through Adam and Eve, you find that in Genesis 3.20. He needed two men for multiplication to happen. Adam called his wife's name Eve. The Bible called her the mother of all living. The mother of all living. Preservation of the earth through the ark and through Noah. It happened through the man Noah. Without Noah, that preservation agenda would not have happened. How about bringing deliverance to Israel from Egypt? It happened through the man Joseph. How about manna falling from heaven? It was at the instance of a prophet called Moses. God used Moses to bring the manna from heaven. But when the manna fell, it was men that picked it to eat it. The manna did not jump into their mouth. Men still played the roles. In 2 Kings chapter 6, 5 to 7, when the axe head floated, it took a man as a prophet called Elijah. And the Bible says that when he prophesied and the axe head floated in verse 6, he told them, he said, now that I brought it up, he said, pick it up, verse 7. Therefore, he said, take it up. I have brought the miracle. The axe head is now floating, but it took a man to pick it up. If they left it, the miracle will not be complete. How about Samaria's supernatural deliverance from famine? It took the man, Elisha, by this time tomorrow. It took men, four lepers, that the Spirit of God moved upon them right and then it took men to pack those resources to Samaria to fulfill that prophetic word how about the deliverance of Nineveh it was through a man Jonah how about the birth of Jesus a woman Mary turning water to wine Jesus the man Mary the woman the disciples who were men who fetched the water, the, the water and turned it to wine. How about the raising of Lazarus? Men, the man Jesus, and the men that rolled away the stone, and the men that lose Lazarus to let him go. How about the feeding of the 5,000? We just read it. The young lad, Andrew, the disciples, Jesus. I'm showing you the ministry of men. How about the triumphant entry to Jerusalem? John, Luke chapter 19, 30 to 35. Just write it for reference. The triumphant entry. Go to a village and you will find a donkey that no man, not even the owners, had ridden upon. Lose it from a man as a man and bring it to a man called Jesus for his triumphant entry. When the owners asked in verse 33 and 34, said the master has need of it. And he said, all right, fine, I give it to you. How about the burial of Jesus? The body of Jesus, like you have learned, was hanging on the cross. But redemption was not complete until a man had a role to play. Joseph of Arimathea used his influence as a man, used his virgin tomb as a wealthy man to bury Jesus for the burial and the resurrection to happen. How about announcing his resurrection? John 20, 16 and 17. Mary of Magdala, we call her Mary Magdalene. Hallelujah. When she heard it, John 20, 16 and 17. Mary, she turned herself and said, Rabboni, which is to say master, verse 17. Jesus said, do not touch me, for I am not ascended to my father. But you, as a human, man, woman, 
go to my brethren and announce my resurrection to them. It took a man to announce the resurrection of Jesus. It's still taking men today. Men, preachers, evangelists, missionaries, apostles, prophets to herald that resurrection. Receiving from men demands the following. Please write. Number one, you must know the value and the role of men in manifesting spiritual realities in your life. Receiving from men demands the following. Number one, you must know the value and the role of men in manifesting spiritual realities. Koinonia is excelling today not just because God said so, but because of the ministry of faithful, loyal men. Men in various ramifications. Number two, receiving from men demands that sometimes you may look beyond your frailties and limitations. It demands that you may look, you look beyond their frailties and limitations. Second Corinthians 4, 7. There is this treasure in earthen vessels. Sometimes the man who holds the key to your destiny may be an angry person, an angry boss, a temperous person. He will insult you from head to toe before he approves a one-week leave for you. It is amazing that sometimes you would think that because of these kinds of men, God should replace him and give others. And yet God does not. He will still keep his grace, his influence, his power with these men. Even though some of them are cyruses, God will still live it that way. Receiving from men demands the following. Number three, humility and adaptation. You want to receive from men as the final arrival point of spiritual realities. You must have humility and you must have the grace to adapt. I learned from Dr. Mike Mudok that adaptation is proof of honor. You must learn to adapt. There are men who have the power to help you, but they can make you sit in their office for seven hours. You will be annoyed, you will be grumbling, you will be saying, what is this? Who does this man think he is? You leave the office and see. One recommendation can help you. Humble yourself and stay. They are not God but they can be used by God. Sometimes we need to be careful. This issue of, are you God? I understand what we are saying. God can help people, but I'm showing you this system of conversion in the spirit. Don't fight men unnecessarily. You will lose at various fronts. Are we together? Humility and adaptation. There are times you need to just humble yourself. Ah, it's been five hours we kept you here. Sorry, we've been in, at a meeting. And while the devil wants to put offense in your heart, you say, no, I know the value that this person's presence can bring. There are many people today whose 10 years would have been reduced to one day if only they adapt, they, 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 they were able to, to adapt to the ministry of men. Hallelujah. Frailties and limitations. Then humility and adaptation. Humility and adaptation humility listen to me don't try to receive from men that have what you need at your own terms it is pride are we together you want a job but you want it when you have the time and you say this man is a ceo uh, sometimes great people can even play with you and say when is your free time and instead of you to quickly say no 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 sir please whatever time you give me Say, well, uh, since you have asked, and you don't know that that question is the interview, that question you see is the interview, and you fail it woefully and go back calling it favor. Say, can you imagine? The man even asked me, oh, just one question. How can a man humble? That means there's really something on my life, and they never call you again. Are we together? You shouted that you receive power and what? Wisdom. When you see great people, don't worship them. But don't trivialize the sacrifices that have brought them where they are. I leaned over in the living room in the afternoon, just relaxing and reflecting on the teaching. And I was just scrolling a few channels. And I stumbled across a channel 
that was showing, I think the video, a, do, a, a, a documentary, some film that was acted on Baba Deboe. And it caught my attention. I watched a few, just a few for a few, but it really impacted me so much. When I got in later and I got into the room, I was thinking, I said, my God, I mean, you could sense the anointing from that, 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 um, that movie. I said, look at such a great man. From the movie, I saw some of the challenges that that man went through. And I said, today, people will just get up and think he got there by luck. 85 years. Over how many years of serving the Lord? Listen, never downplay the sacrifices that brought glory to men. Your boss may be an angry man, but he was not promoted by luck. Are we together now? Yes. This man, who knows, is just lucky. The man even sounds like a dummy. Yet he was working in the civil service before you were born. What made the government or what made whoever to elevate him to that point? Believers always like to downplay the sacrifices of people. You see a great preacher and you say he's just lucky. It's an attitude of failures and losers. Nobody has sustainable result by mistake. I'm sharing with you irrefutable principles. Don't. The fathers of faith, my goodness. As I grow in ministry and as God continues to do what he's doing in our lives around the world, I am humbled by the kind of stamina that these fathers had. Because many of them were pioneers of these realms. Remember my teaching followers of them? Many of them were pioneers. Even though they had the people before them, it was not in the manner and the fashion they followed. How did they survive the persecutions? How did they survive the things they had to endure, bringing them to that point of grace? Some of us got born again in their churches, their branches. How did they believe God to expand that far? So how do you trivialize that? A man who through his ministry like Reinhard Bonke, over 100 million souls came to Jesus. 100 million recorded salvations, minus the ones that did not get documented. How do you casualize and trivialize such a ministry? And you've not even won 50 people, confirmed. Hallelujah. A great chain, maybe an eatery somewhere, and you enter the eatery and you say, these people, shame on them. I'm so disappointed. Look at the building, it's not even nice. The person who is speaking does not even have the money to finish the payment of the food you will eat. He's hoping that his friends will help them. And sometimes the owner comes and says, okay, um, good afternoon, can we help you? Are you the owner? Look, let me tell you, it's just because I, there's nowhere to... <sighs> Respect greatness. Respect greatness. Greatness in ministry. Greatness in business. Greatness in governance. Respect greatness. It is one of the ways to receive from men. I will never dishonor true greatness when I see it. Because behind that crown, you have learned again and again here are scars, testaments of endurance. Testaments of endurance. Some of these great people may not be as smart as you think they are, but there is a covenant before God that has brought them to that point of grace. Do not ignore it. Do not ignore it. Do not ignore it. Hallelujah. I remember one day I was passing a particular state and they took me around and I saw a very large property in acres and they said it belonged to so-so-so -so -so ministry and I just nodded my head. I said, these people again, you see this grace. Whereas someone can be struggling for one plot of land and never get it and there are people who have a grace for territory. Every grace you ignore, you have shut the door to receiving it. Receiving from men demands humility and adaptation. Let me give you a final thought on the ministry of men. Receiving from men demands grace.
gratitude and honor I will draw me to you and you've heard countless testimonies here of the value of gratitude let me challenge you this week find something to tell any boss or any superior you have if it's a gift buy a gift and tell them thank you genuinely don't do it pretentiously take this as a prophetic instruction go to your office tomorrow with a gift apostle you are putting me in an I hate that man you will remain there you want promotion humble yourself sir thank you this is a little token I bought you a basket of oranges and this just to say thank you for all that you have done thank you for giving my sister a job and the person laughs and said I'm, I'm busy we're in a meeting that's all right thank you God bless you and you say you see he didn't even acknowledge me don't worry do it go and tell your superior thank you tell your spouse thank you don't wait for a valentine tell your spouse thank you genuinely and sincerely tell your children tell your parents tell your loved ones tell anyone who has been a major contributor or can be used by god a man of god who's, who has impacted your life sincerely tell them thank you you can sow into their lives do it you can sow into their lives send a text with gratitude apostle say i should thank you thank you for being one of the people who blessed me he would delete it with anger and block your line say wisdom please shout it koinonia say wisdom don't do that when you are appreciating people don't compare them take out time to appreciate them uniquely for what they stand for you do it and watch the testimonies that happen after this and don't forget to tell God himself thank you thank you thank you thank you oh my father for giving us your son leaving your spirit tells your work on earth is done. when i meet with my leaders i always start by telling them thank you when i meet with the workers i start by telling them thank you whether here canada uk us doesn't matter thank you you want to enjoy the ministry of men learn to say thank you don't just say thank you when you are given gifts even after that I think there's a Yoruba strategy, let me borrow it now, where you say thank you the night and by the next day, you say thank you again. Powerful strategy, double it even. Do your own for three days, thank you. Then say thank you. Then say, I wish I didn't have to do this, but I'm too grateful to be silent. Thank you again, sir. Ah! Man says, who is this? This is my secretary. I found my secretary no application thank you they do an interview for you when you are done don't frown your face and say are you done they say go thank you i'm teaching you as simple as what i'm saying is it has worked in my life like magic thank you to god thank you to men thank you to those under those who are your contemporaries those above you receiving from men demands honor demands gratitude those of you who are going to receive palliatives after service i hope you will say thank you yeah listen to me the church is a place of training if i don't say this some of you where's my own you just carry it and turn and it, it doesn't hurt the giver the giver gives because they are blessed thank you many christians are very bad that saying thank you bad at communicating honor learn this as a principle but just obey this prophetic instruction do it in your office this week you have contemporaries order a meal for three or five of them who are in your office just go to, to work and drop the meals and say I was in church and we were challenged to do this and here are the meals for all of you don't choose the ones you like do it for everybody including the one that fought you by the weekend do it some say no 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 no. who knows what they put in this don't worry you just do it someone will sit down and look at you and say this is it 
this person for doing this it's not about the food it's about the thoughtfulness they will mark your kindness the day you are in need that's when you will know the value of men can i tell you one of the ways you know that you have commanded the attention of men is that they will show up the day you need them the day men you are in need and no man shows up is a testament that you have ignored this there are some of you god forbid not to make you sad but if there is a bereavement in your family or there's something you are sick or some challenge nobody shows up for you nobody your birthday everybody forgets it because you spent your life closing the door through offense through competition through jealousy through whatever it is nobody shows up for you you're a preacher nobody's there to help you how are you how is your health how is it no you're not influencing anybody manifesting spiritual realities we are here today because of God but the final bus stop was the ministry of men whilst we are here there is a team of faithful able people scattered across the globe preparing for a sound of revival conferences laboring day and night many of them following right now men you are as powerful as the men that God brings around if I'm not in koinonia for one year you will not stop being edified the only thing you will miss is my unique contribution but there are faithful men built by God forged from the furnace forged from fire men teaching at the school of ministry men able to do the things that we're doing for the kingdom men there are tens of thousands of people following online now potentially hundreds of thousands and even millions will be listening to this message tonight and in the days to come that is happening through the ministry of men you've been seated but there are wonderful people moving around doing this there are security operatives all across this auditorium securing lives securing property men in the multitude of men is a king's honor i repeat in the multitude of men in the multitude of men you are as powerful as the men that believe in you not the few that do not believe in you you are as powerful that them as the men the reason why zuckerberg is a billionaire today is because we believe in him and his vision enough to patronize that business perpetually till he scaled his business to a point of wealth your business is at the mercy of men not just god alone your ministry is at the mercy of men Ladies and gentlemen, you are not just here tonight because you believe in Jesus. You are also here because you believe in the vessel he's using. That's why you left your house. That's why our international guests travel from around the world literally every week. There are people coming from around the world every two, two weeks, every month at least in this place right now. Don't tell me men do not matter. The final arrival point of everything that leaves heaven, it comes through men. Let me recap for one last time. The keys that transport realities from the spirit. Number one, contend for light. Number two, press into the realm of consciousness and conviction. And that happens through meditation. Number three, mix the truth you know with faith. Faith meaning obedience. Obedience in all its ramifications obedience as value obedience as wisdom number four engage in spiritual warfare the realm of the spirit controls the physical realm when you settle things in the realm of the spirit the spirit of god can find free course through men through systems and structures finally expect and prepare for the ministry of men Take it half for me. Your life is at the mercy of the man who chooses to partner with the realm of the spirit for your manifestation. When we call God Ebenezer, when we call him Jaira, when we call him all the names that we call him, it is because when he stretches his hands from heaven, 
his hand will enter through a man to finally reach to you the person today who God will use to lift you financially is on earth the person through whom God will anoint you and set you apart from an extraordinary ministry is already around the destiny helper you have been praying for is not about to be born is most likely born God wants to bring glory through our lives. God wants to lift us and honor us. And God gave me an assignment to show you tonight how to manifest spiritual realities. This is how God helped this man standing before you. I read this from books. I listened to men who had capacity and results. And I'm glad I did listen. Ultimately, I listened to the word of God and to the voice of the Spirit. Today, look what God has done. It is to the glory of his name it is the same there is absolutely nothing the devil can do about it these are irrefutable principles as I saw the photos of some of the things that were putting together just to be a blessing to people aside from do you know that I was told the registrations for the agricultural project we just wanted a few people but there were about 5,000 plus applications. I said, my God, what do we do? For the support for businesses, we're about 4,000 people. What takes a man from nothing to where you can experience the help of God? We don't know everything. We don't have everything yet. But there are some things he has shown us mercy in. And out of the abundance of his help, I have brought you a strategy tonight. Are we together you can convert everything in the spirit from prophecy and make it manifest what you see today is not what you are trying to bring down from the spirit is what we brought down years ago tomorrow we'll show you what we are doing now because compared to where he's taking us we're only a step out of the cave truly till the nation see Jesus be glorified, be glorified, hallelujah, be glorified, be glorified, be glorified, hallelujah, be glorified. Please rise up on your feet. South African version. One prayer on your part and then I speak over you. Father, everything you have declared in scripture, this is the season where I want to see it manifest in my life. Go ahead and obtain grace. Obtain grace to contend for light. Koinonia, you are praying. Obtain grace to contend for light. Obtain grace to rise through meditation to a realm that is beyond mental ascent, a realm of conviction, persuasion, consciousness. Obtain grace to mix the things that you hear with faith, obedience value putting the word to work satisfying the conditions that commit god to speak in your life obtain grace 
to engage in the place of prayer until you settle scores in the spirit. Word of the arsenals of darkness mandated to fight your influence, your relevance, the purposes of God in your life. Come on, are you praying? Finally pray for discernment to be able to engage with men. Destiny actualization is men dependent. Excelling in ministry is men dependent. Excelling in business is men dependent. You are as powerful as the men God bring to your life. You are as mighty as the men that stand with you, stand for you, stand by you. Your company is as powerful as the men who need you, the men who patronize your products and services. As a man of God, you are as powerful and relevant as the men who are willing and open to receive of the grace of God and the spiritual value that is invested in your life. Don't downplay men. It is not good for a man that he should be alone. When you are alone with no men, your life is not good. Your ministry will not be good. Your business will not be good. Someone pray. Hallelujah. I'm about to speak over your life. The Bible says the Lord gave the word. He says great was the company of them. The Lord gave the business idea. Great was the company of them. The Lord founded the ministry. Great was the company of them. The Lord brought the vision, brought the project. Great was the company of them that came to stand. In ancient times, if kings conquered a land, they would take the men. The men help them to expand their influence. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm tempted to lead you to one prayer. Please, I'd like you to cry and say, Lord, this week, the men sent by God to make prophecy finally manifest. Lord, bring them by your mercy. Go ahead and pray. Bring them by your mercy. Bring them by your mercy. Bring them by your mercy. The men my business need, the men needed in my ministry, the men needed in my family, the men needed in my destiny, the men needed for my products, my services, the men needed for my vision. By your mercy, bring them, bring them. They are on earth, they are around, they are willing to help. Bring them, oh God. The men needed to help me secure a visa, bring them, oh God. The men needed to help me scale my education, bring them. The men needed to help me with my housing issue. I need your help. Your house is a place of help. Send the help from his sanctuary. That happens through men. Come through for me. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my head. My God, let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Send men, send voices that have the ears of my helpers. In Jesus' name I pray. I stretch my hands towards you in the name of Jesus. And I want you to receive this prophetic word. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. The grace that backs everything I have taught you today. That empowers you to walk in keeping and see it manifest. May that grace rest upon you. The grace to contend for light. Receive it in Jesus' name. The grace that supplies the discipline to meditate until scriptures become spirit and life to you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace that empowers you to obey and to obey completely. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The energizing of the spirit to contend in the place of prayer 
until you birth and manifest victories. I release that grace upon you. The grace that brings men, that draws men from all the 36 states in this nation, the continents in the, the nations that make up this continent and the continents of the earth, wherever your help is through men, may God gravitate it to your destiny. No more delay of prophecy over your life. Koinonia, hear me. No more delay of prophecy over your life. Let it manifest speedily. Speedily. Regardless the economic turmoil that is sweeping across the nations of the earth, I pray for you. The men who will put you in a position of advantage to be immune from this financial holocaust, may God send them to your life. The men who will announce what you carry in the name of Jesus Christ, without struggle, God will bring them to your life. And I pray for you, anybody who has left your life by demonic manipulation, they should not have left. They were helpers. And the devil created a scenario and took them out of your life. I return them by prophecy to your life. I return them by prophecy to your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me please. No Jesus, no life. No Jesus, no life. You reject Jesus, you reject life. You embrace Jesus, you embrace life. You embrace Jesus, you embrace continuity. You embrace lifting, you embrace deliverance. You embrace healing, you embrace exaltation. It is for this reason that Jesus gave his all and his everything. I'm praying for someone right now that you have never made a genuine decision for Jesus. Do not let us close this service without you running to Jesus. I'm going to count one to five. Someone must have been impacted by this message and he's saying, Apostle, I want to make this decision truly. For someone you are saying, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. I'm counting one to five. Run, pack your Bibles, your whatever it is, your bags, everything you came to church with don't allow anyone to come before you leave your seat and come i'm counting one to five i'm running i'm running i'm running to the mercy seat i'm running i'm running two are you coming Let's celebrate them as they come. If you know today that if Jesus comes, you are going to hell, come and join them. If you know today you are not sure of salvation, that if the trumpet sounds, you are going straight to hell, come and join them. Don't cheat your destiny and don't waste your destiny. Now today is the day of salvation. The Bible is very clear as to that. Please come. Jesus is able to give you a new beginning. There's no point shying away. There's no point pretending. Not when love is around. Not when mercy is around. The Bible says to come boldly before the throne of grace. And for all who are falling online, connecting from all our expressions, make sure that you open up your heart to receive salvation. It is a gift. A gift that is received by faith. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming. I salute your courage. It is a noble thing to make Jesus Lord of your life. The wisest decision that any man can make in this side of God's kingdom. You're joining them. Thank you, my sister. Please join them very quickly. If you're joining them, come quickly. I'm about to lead them to pray. Lift your right hand if you can, high above your head. Say this after me as loud as you can. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it again. Say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe 
that you rose again for my justification right now I receive you into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever I am a child of God washed by the blood of the Lamb I go for whatever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for the gift of these precious ones who have come to the cross i pray by the power of the holy spirit based on the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven and in the name of jesus i call you this moment bona fide recipients of the life of god i call you the righteousness of god in christ recipients of his life the grace to live the victorious christian life from tonight let it be released upon you in the name of jesus you go forward ever and backward never in jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen thank you so much ladies and gentlemen please let me request that you follow our counselors for just a minute or two they are waving the placard let's appreciate them as they move they will have a word with you very quickly for a minute or two and then you return to your seat is this the best that you can do koinonia dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny Alaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the The phase of development Lord grant me the discipline